This week on Maker Update, cardboard trees for cats, an LED pixel clock, a pocket disco, molecules for your neck, a light river for your kitchen, a solar heart, and an eight player NES. Hey, I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another Maker Update. Happy holidays. I hope you're all warm and toasty. I have a fun show for you today with eight projects. Let's start with the project of the week. Check out this cardboard Christmas tree for cats by Bob Claggett. Now, I'm allergic to cats and I have no genuine interest in building this, but I have to give it Project of the Week status because one, a lot of people have cats, and two, you have to see how Bob and Josh layer up cardboard to make this. By gluing up sheets of cardboard in alternating directions, they've basically created a kind of cardboard plywood. From this, they use a CNC router to cut their design, but in the end, they show how cutting the design from a jigsaw actually leads to cleaner results. Bottom line, if you want to make a quick, cheap, temporary structure, for cats or humans or just something to look at, the techniques outlined here for designing and executing with cardboard are super useful. In news this week, MakerBot announced a new $6,500 3D printer called Method. They're billing it as a performance 3D printer geared towards business customers. The big claim here is a faster print time, which they say is twice as fast as conventional 3D printing. The design features dual extruders and an enclosed print bed with heating elements to maintain a consistent temperature. It looks interesting, but I'm a little skeptical and would love to see it in a head-to-head -head challenge. On Thingiverse, Daniel Sikic has a guide up on making this color LED pixel clock with a 3D printed structure. The framework is designed for you to neatly snake NeoPixel strip around the inside, but also blocks out the light bleeding over from each pixel. There are 83 LEDs in total, all linked up to an Arduino Pro Mini and a real-time clock module to keep precise track of time. It's a good-looking payoff, and there's even a little enclosure for the Arduino on the back to keep things tidy. On Instructables, Lone Soul Surfer has a project he calls Pocket Disco. It's a down-and-dirty, old-school breadboard project that links up a series of LEDs to a 4017 decade counter and a cheap electric microphone. When the mic hears a sound, it cycles the decade counter and creates a blinky light show with the LEDs. It's a fun little perf board project with no programming required, and I especially like the look of the cigarette case enclosure. Penelope Bolnick has some more 3D printed jewelry designs up on Instructables. These ones are all modeled after different molecules, including dopamine, adrenaline, GABA, and caffeine. The prints are quick. You add some rhinestones to the intersections and a chain on the ends, and the results look great. But if you don't see a reason to make a necklace, Penelope also includes a version of the guide for making these as Christmas tree ornaments, minus the rhinestones. Over on Makezine, Caleb Kraft has a great build diary that covers how he made this wooden river of light as an under cabinet light fixture for his kitchen. Included in the write-up is a two-part video that covers the design, execution, and the trouble he ran into along the way. Definitely worth a look, even just a peek at what's involved in the process. Through Hackaday, I learned about Antilife's solar LED heart ornament. The project uses a custom circuit board and a 3D printed enclosure. The crazy part is, he designed it to run it for 30 years with no battery. Instead, he has the small solar cell charging up a supercapacitor hiding inside the box. His write-up goes into some deep detail on what components to use if you're trying to do something similar. Finally, check out Octopad by Patrick Lemieux. This is a hack for the original Nintendo game controller that splits a single controller out to eight separate controllers, but each with only one of the eight buttons. So one player is up, the other player has down, someone has B, the other has A. You get the idea. It looks like a wacky modification, though I can't imagine it's much fun to be the start or select button. I have a bunch of tips to share. Over on Tested, there's a great interview with kinetic artist Nemo Gould and a tour of his workshop. Nemo talks about his methods for organizing project materials, the art of hoarding scrap, and reasons to avoid digital fabrication. Gareth Branwin's Tips of the Week column talks about shaping foam with a soldering iron, creating molds with silicone caulking, and a cool cosplay project notebook from Punished Props. On Thingiverse, I found an updated collection of holiday 3D print designs, including this reindeer kit from Shink that I printed up. I may include this with some holiday cards this year. Hackaday has announced a circuit sculpture contest inspired by the freeform circuit work of Mohit Voigt and Eric Brandel. If you're into freeform circuit design and point-to-point -point soldering, this could be for you. Through the Tindy blog, I found this LED controller called the Electromage Pixel Blaze V2. 
The $29 board works with a variety of LED strip, including Dot Star. The neat trick is that it has an ESP8266 on board, hosting a web-based LED animation editor that you can log on to and change how your LEDs look and behave. It seems like a neat idea. The Raspberry Pi Foundation has published a new official beginner's guide to Raspberry Pi. It's available in print, but you can also download it for free. And for my cool tool recommendation of the week, check out my video on the Makey Makey. I thought of it when I saw that Octopad controller. For $50, this board breaks out any computer's keyboard to a set of capacitive touchpads that you can wire up with alligator clips to buttons or switches or bananas. It's like a Swiss army knife for interaction design. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. Get on the Maker Update email list to get show notes emailed out to you automatically every week and help you stay on top of each week's show. And a huge thanks to my patrons on Patreon. You guys are awesome. If you're not a patron, consider becoming one. All right? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.